Hi folks, this is Diffie Q Take Home 3. This is a nice review for the second exam. Later in the course, well, next week, we're going to be looking at uh, these differential equations in general. These are belong to a special class of Diffie Qs called Cauchy Euler equations. And so what we're going to do is to try to motivate some of the technique we're going to have to solve those. The first thing to note is that we're given this differential equation. It's not a constant coefficient ODE like we're used to, to using or used to dealing with. And we're given a restriction here x greater than zero. So that's going to play an important role later on. So unlike constant coefficient Diffie Qs, when we make the assumption y equals e to the mx, we're going to make the assumption y equals x to the m. Every time we take a derivative of, of a function like this, we're going to be losing a power of x. And what we notice is that the, we're multiplying the second derivative by x squared. So the two powers of x we would lose to the second derivative we're getting back. And so that's what's going on here. And that's what tells us that this might not be a bad thing to try. So that's our first task, is we take y equals x to the m, and we take derivatives of that. Then we take these and we substitute them back into my differential equation. So x squared y double prime. plus 7x times y prime plus 9y. That's equal to 0. And now I look at what happens here. x squared times x to the m minus 2 is going to give me an x to the m. x times x to the m minus 1 is going to give me an x to the m. I'm going to have an x to the m I can factor out. And what's left over? I get an m squared minus m plus 7m plus 9. Now I go back to my assumption x is greater than 0. If x is greater than 0 that can never be 0 and so we're just left with this polynomial in terms of m. This gives us a double root m equals negative 3 and negative 3. And so what do we get out of this? I get y equals x to the minus third. Now I know that in order to solve a second order linear differential equation, I need two linearly independent solutions. This technique only gave me one. Well, now that I have one, I can go back and do a reduction of order to find a second one. And so that's what we're going to do now. So remember uh, how the reduction of order works. We're going to make the assumption that I can get a second solution by taking some function times my first solution. So what we need to do is we need to substitute this back into the differential equation. And if you go through the product rules here, you get y prime negative 3 x to the minus fourth u plus x cubed u prime. And then your y double prime will be 12x to the minus fifth u minus 6x to the minus fourth u plus x to the minus third u double prime. This is a u prime here. So 12x to the minus fifth u minus 6x to the minus fourth u prime plus x to the minus q, uh, third u double prime. So what I need to do is take these and substitute them back into my differential equation. So I'm going to stick this into x squared y double prime plus 7x y prime plus 9y equals 0. And when you get that and, and everything sorts itself out, you end up getting this differential equation, x to the minus 1 u double prime plus x to the minus 2 u prime equals 0. So once again you take each of these and substitute them in where they belong in the Diffie Q and at the end you get this guy. So how do we solve this differential equation? 
Well, this is a linear differential equation. I'm going to multiply through by x to get this. And I can use an integrating factor here, e to the integral x to the minus 1 dx. That's e to the natural log x. And I don't need absolute value once again. x is bigger than 0. So I just get that. So really what this means is the left-hand side is the exact differential of x u prime, which means that x u prime is a constant, which means that u is some constant times the natural log of x uh, plus some other constant. Okay. So, my second solution was x to the minus third times this u. That's x to the minus third times. I had a constant natural log x plus another constant. So I get c x to the minus third natural log x plus dx to the minus third. Now x to the minus third was the original one that I got, so that's going to be trapped into the other solution. So Really, the, the new linearly independent function I found here is x to the minus third natural log x. So I get from my general solution c1 x to the minus third plus c2 x to the minus third natural log x. And believe it or not, once we get into chapter 6, we'll be able to, to get this exact solution in just two steps. But for now, we're, we're stuck with the reduction of order. So that'll do it then for part B.